a really good morning from the farm on the Brazilian countryside. So this is the car of Daniel Suzuki Jimny. That's like a little G-Wagon. And he just picked me up at the place where I stayed because we can have some breakfast here, so that's really nice. And he also invited me to stay here uh, another night and then I can have dinner, lunch as well. So I need to think about it because I don't, I need to check how many time I have to get to Bolivia because of the health certificate of, of Timo. Um, ah, see, almost a, so it's like cantina. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the place where all the workers have lunch, uh, have dinner, also have breakfast. And Daniel lives in uh, Diamantino and yeah, we are going to have some uh, breakfast together right now. I already have my cycling clothes on, you know, so I was ready to cycle, but uh, let's see after the after the breakfast what I'm, uh, what I'm going to do, because it's really relaxed to stay here for one, uh, one more day. Que vamos a uh, comer? Vamos a comer? No, pelo jeito hoje tem pão só, não tem bolo. Mas hoje ficaremos no pão, ela tá cortando o pão. Farm de Sayuno. Farm de Sayuno. Olá, bom dia. Você tem margarina? Traz margarina para ele, por favor. Por quantos anos você uh, trabalha aqui? Whole life. Eu nasci no Paraná, cidade chamada Cascavel, uhum. mas eu venho para o Mato Grosso, que é o estado do Mato Grosso, desde pequeno. E aqui nós estamos nessa fazenda já tem mais de 20 anos, aqui nesta fazenda. É simples, mas é... Sim, sim, pera, perfeito. <risos> so we have some bread with some, uh, some butter and some coffee. A última vez que eu conversei com alguém em inglês, uh -huh. last time that I spoke in English, spoke in English more than 20 years. 20 years ago? Yeah, more than 20 years ago. I'm because a little bit... Difficult. <laughs> 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 but are there no tourists here in Mato Grosso? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. 20 years ago, uh, we received a lot of cotton farmers here. Because I was living at Primavera do Leste. I have a farm there. Mm -hmm. The family. The we same state, a, also in Mato Grosso. The same state. We are cotton producers and we receive a, a lot of cotton farmers from the world. Mm -hmm. United States, Brisbane, Australia, mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, even France, UK, because the cotton of Brazil is one of the best of the world. Mm -hmm. Why? Because here we, the crop season happens uh, when when you don't have rain, it's dry, completely dry. If you don't have a rain on the, the cotton, the cotton is more white, much better the, much the, better. the, the, the quality. So you have two farms. Here we produce soybean, corn and meat. This wow. is tapioca. And how do you, you eat it? Just like this? Yeah. I don't mm. have cheese here to put, to, but uh, try to eat it. I don't know if you're gonna like, because you have to, uh, you need to put some stuff in the middle. Yeah? Ah, okay. Cheese. Because it doesn't really have taste. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Meat is really cheap in Brazil. Cheap, very cheap. Yeah, because it's so, everyone eats meat, right? Everyone. I never, I never went to the US, but I know there, if you if you wanna eat some meat, there is very very expensive. I don't know in Europe and in the uh, Netherlands we have a lot of uh, uh, like vegetarians and vegans. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer meat. <laughs> yeah, me too. Have you eat uh, churrasco? Churrasco, so, so good. On like espeto on the. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing! <laughs> yeah, too good. Mm -hmm. Just in Brazil. <laughs> Just in Brazil. Yeah. But it's like if you you're... see a lot of meat. Oh my god! <laughs> yes. Yes. So we are now in the office of Daniel of the farm. Um, and it's the royal family from Germany. From Germany. Yeah, we have some pictures of the royal family here. The uh -huh. princess. And what? Why? What happened some... with the royal family here? 
and they bought here uh -huh. one one small one this land in Brazil and one land in Africa uh -huh. because they was afraid of about the third world war that it's gonna be atomic war yeah mm -hmm. and they bought here uh -huh. and in Africa to escape to escape from the third world war that was emerging because the Cold War, yes? Uh -huh. Remember? You studied about yeah, yeah, yeah. the Cold War. Uh, <laughs> every country was uh, doing his atomic bomb mm -hmm. and the afraid of exploding mm -hmm. the Third War was awesome. And they bought here to escape so far away from the, Everything. the, yeah. the north lands of the world. Yeah. But they did, they, did they also come here to visit or did they only buy they, it? No, they come here to visit. I'm gonna show you the, some details from those yeah. uh, times. So this is like the old map of the farm? The old map of the farm. Uh, and which um, date has this map? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it <laughs> looks really <laughs> old. <laughs> <laughs> but before it Very was like 5500 50, hectares. Yeah was so big. And what happened with the other part of the yeah. farm? Uh, one, one thing about Diamantino is the city uh -huh. that the farm is, is in, Diamantino. Diamantino, it was the very lar the largest city in the world. So where are we going right now, Daniel? <laughs> I'm losing words. <laughs> uh, we are in the office, at the office from Silo office, the silo to office. carry to carry those trucks with the soybean. So we are now going to the big storage where they have all the soybeans. Uh, so this is the main road here, and yesterday we went off the main road, uh, yeah, to the fazenda, to the farm. So those machines they use to separate like the soybeans from the dirt and yet yeah, the other part of the soybean which is not consumed by humans yeah they feed it to the cows look there the couple where ah oh. <laughs> there's like an older or how do you call it oh, really beautiful corusia and is this to eat or what for what do you use the soybean to eat to eat. They transform in oil. So the truck is now arriving and now we are going to weigh the truck to check okay what's the weight and then yeah we are going to fill the truck with soybeans and then they are going to weigh the truck again to check okay uh, how many kilos of soybeans yeah does the truck carry. As you can see the giant trucks we saw on the road and they go to all the farms you know uh, in this area in the state of Mato Grosso for yeah, soybeans in this case so yeah the truck is not totally filled but that box is like empty there uh, so therefore uh, yeah we are filling up that box with new soybeans and this is like the elevator and the elevator is yeah, carrying uh, new soybeans to that box over there to uh, fill the truck with 1000 kilos more. So that's a lot of soybean. As you can see, the truck is almost full. And then, uh, yeah, we need to fill the other one as well. Um, but he is selling, uh, Daniel is selling his last batch of, uh, of soybean. Good morning from the farm of Daniel. Uh, and Daniel, why are we in the car right now? To take care of the trip, man. <laughs> Rogers, because we are crossing the Onsa Pintada lines. He lives here in the middle of the forest. I'm a little worried about him.
crossing this part of the farm alone with his dog. Yeah, because <laughs> Daniel already saw uh, like the Jaguars crossing uh, crossing this road. And yeah, it's a giant property, you know, we are, are driving already for 30 minutes, I think. Yeah, we still need how many kilometers more? More 10 kilometers. So yeah, with the bicycle, this will take me like two hours to uh, cross the property, I think. Uh, so yeah, we are going to start uh, the cycling day today in Diamantino. Um, and from there, we have to make roads. Yep. So this is the end of the farm. So this is the border, right? Yeah, this, yeah. Is, the border. this is the border. So we are just dropped off by Daniel. Daniel is going to leave again to the farm. Ciao, at the logo. So yeah, uh, it was crazy that, uh, that we could stay there. So we rested a bit, we slept there for two nights. And yeah, we are going to say goodbye to the dangerous Brazilian roads as well. Because that's the reason I'm going to travel more into the interior of Mato Grosso. That's the reason I'm here. Otherwise we would have need to continue on the dangerous road. But I'm going to end the video here. Hopefully you enjoy the video. And hopefully we are going to enjoy the route more as well. Because when it's more quiet on the road, yeah, you can enjoy cycling a lot more than when it's really busy. So I'm going to uh, check everything and then I'm going to uh, take off to Bolivia. Still 500 kilometers, but that's something for a new video. Thank you for watching and see you next time in Brazil.